Hey, welcome to InfoGamer. In this video, we're going to start working again on our item pickups. In this video, we're going to make it so that you can't pick up more than one hat or jetpack at a time. This will help with debugging issues so that we don't have to worry about having five hats at a time and having to delete each individual one. And it will just be easier all around. So let's get started. When you have Unity open, let's go to the body script. Double click on that. Scroll down so that we're at our else if other tag equals hat. And we're going to add some code in here. The first line is going to be an if statement. And we're going to do monster hit. And this is a previous action we've already used before. We're going to use it again with our hat. And it's exclamation equals null. So if it's not equal to null, this if statement will run. Curly brackets. Then the next line is going to be monster hit. And we're going to set it equal to hat. And how we set the string, it's a string, right? Yeah, this uh, is how the we parameter. How we set this parameter in monster hit is like we would be setting a string with that's how you set it equal to hat yeah so we've used this action before when we were coding our doodle jumps collision or our box dudes collision with a monster and this is what we were using to trigger the game over and so we, you can rename this action it's up at the top with the variables but if you rename it in this script, then you also need to rename it everywhere else it appears in every other script that you have it. All right. Then we're going to go down to our else if jetpack. It's, it's actually up here. And we're going to type in roughly the same code, but we're going to set it to jetpack instead of hat. So this is making to see, it's checking to see if the action is broadcasting anything. So if it is already broadcasting a different string, then it won't run through this if statement. So like if we ran into a monster and then we ran into a jetpack in like the same frame, but the monster came first, then it would only send the monster string rather than the jetpack. Sweet. So once you've, once you've done that, we need to go back to Unity and create a new script. And this script will go on to all of our pickups, but it'll also actually go on to our monsters. So you could call it like deletion script for pickups or monsters. We just called it pickups. So we created it in the same way um, that we normally do. We call it pickups. Um, but the first thing that we need to do is subscribe to the action, the monster hit action. So this will go into our on enable function. So we'll type void on enable. So the first thing that we need to do is create a variable for our feet script. So we'll type main character feet script and then we'll call it feet script. And the reason why we're not making this a public variable is because this is going to go on to our prefabs. And whenever you have a prefab that you're instantiating into your scene, you can't pre-assign values from the game. So we wouldn't be able to drag in the feet script from our doodle jump character into a prefab. We have to assign that variable on awake or on um, start in our start function or on enable. All right, the first thing we want to do in our on enable is to subscribe to our body script. So we're going to type body script dot monster hit plus equals monster hit semicolon. Okay, so for this next variable, we need to assign a value 
to our feed script variable. So above we have our variable main character feed script, feed script, and because we didn't make it public, we need to assign it because we can't do it in the inspector. So we call our variable feed script, then we say equals game object. Then we need to find that game object, so we're going to use a function, a member function that's dot find with tag, and then in parentheses we're going to write feet script, uh, just feet, because that's what our object is tagged. So we'll go that far. So that gets us the game object that is tagged feet, but we can't save a game object into a variable that has the dad type or that's looking for the main character feet script. So we need to get the component. So we say dot get component, then in carrots we put main character feet script because that's the data type we're looking for and then we put parentheses in a semicolon. Alright, we're now gonna write some code that's gonna unsubscribe us to the monster hit but that's gonna be in our void on disable and the void on disable is an already written function by unity that will that's when an, it will check to see when an item's disabled, then it will run this code that's in, in this, in the brackets of the on disabled. And this next line is going to be where we unsubscribe. So it's going to be the same line as the subscribed that we did above, but it will have a minus instead of a plus. And that's all the code that's going to go in void on disable. So you might be wondering why we have some red lines under monster hit after the plus equals and after the minus equals. That's because we need to create a function inside this script that's called monster hit. So we're going to type void monster hit and then inside the parentheses the parameters or the parameter is going to be string what was sent is what we're going to call it. So essentially, our monster hit action that's in our body script is sending a string to this script, whether it's called hat or whether it's called jetpack as we did in the beginning. And we need this function to receive that string. That's why we have the parameter. And now we're going to check what was sent. And that's why we called it that. Cool, and this next if statement it's going to check to see what was sent if it was hat or jetpack. So we're going to type if, and then in the argument, we're going to say what was sent double equals hat in quotations, and then an or what was sent double equals jetpack in quotations. And then in this, if statement, when it gets run, we want it to destroy that game object that it is, whether it's hat or jetpack. And that's destroying it. Is it destroying it on the map that appears? In the hierarchy? Yeah, or is it destroying it off the character? This is destroying the hat pickup. So the object that our main character runs into in order to get the hat. Cool. Make sure all your spellings are correct. I misspelled the main character feed up here. So I just fixed that. And the error went away. And then what else we got? So now we need to create another function. And this is going to be called in our on enable. So we'll type void destroy pickup. And then parentheses. Cool, and we got another if statement like our other one, but this time we're checking to see what the tag is set to. All right, so in the if statement of the destroy pickup function, we're gonna say, we're gonna say for the argument, we're gonna say feet script dot hat is not equal to null or feet script dot jetpack is not equal to null. And this is checking to see if the game object of the feed script
Once one of these are set to not equal null, so they act, the character actually has a hat or a jetpack, we're going to send it to destroy the object. So destroy in parentheses this dot game object. Okay, and we need to make sure this function gets run through. So we need to call it in void on enable. We need to call it on enable. And that would be destroyed pickup. Parentheses, semicolon. So this first function of destroy pickup is called when our item pickup is created in our game. And if our main character already has a hat or a jetpack, we don't want him to pick up another one. And so we're checking to see if he currently has one. And if he does, then we're destroying the cur this game object, which is the item pickup. We also need to check for when our item pickup is already created, our dual jump character hasn't picked up a hat, but then he picks up a hat. And that's why this monster hit function is called. So that when our item pickup is already created, and then after it's created, our doodle jump character picks up a hat or a jetpack, then we destroy this current object. So let's go ahead and save this project and go back to Unity. Now the only thing we need to do in Unity is drag our new script, our pickup script, onto our pickup prefabs. So we put this on our, our hats and our jetpacks. And if you've already created groups, then you need to go to your individual hats that are contained within those groups and attach this script to it and your jetpacks. You can do this by going to your prefabs folder, finding your hat prefab, and then go to add component, and then go to your add component and find scripts, and then find your pickup script. But we've already added it to ours, so we'll go ahead and remove it. And you can do that to this, and you can do that with your groups as well. If you expand your groups, you can find your, your item pickups and attach it to those. Hey, thanks for watching till the end. This video, we can't really show you in Unity what it does. In the next video, we will be able to because the next video covers our player movement when they pick up an item. So instead of it just hovering there in the middle of the screen, it's going to move all the platforms down the right amount of distance. And so we'll be able to show you that no other hat or rocket pickups will be able to be picked up, which is the code we showed you this time. Yeah, it's because they've already been destroyed. And then once that hat pops off, you'll see that there will be rockets and hat pickups after that. And a lot of you have been wondering when we were going to get back to our item pickups and when we were going to fix the platform movement. So... Make sure that you stay tuned for our next video because that's what we're going to be covering. Thanks for all your support and please subscribe if you haven't already right here. Yeah.